kind of uh, part of it. I don't think they've uh, bit their burden. Um, they certainly have put on evidence that the weapon was stolen, but we don't know when that weapon was stolen. We don't know the circumstances. And you, you, you're wondering why that's important, why that matters. Well, I'm wondering why you're saying that to me. I mean, if it were stolen 10 years ago, as opposed to the day before, will it matter for me? It would, because the okay. prosecution would certainly jump up and argue that if it were just recently stolen, that he would obviously have some sort of not that would obviously mean he had some knowledge it was stolen because recent possession would be a sort of point to that. Oh, I so I'm, I'm taking that argument out of their mouth. They have to be able to show that he had some knowledge that the weapon was stolen. So what did they have? He paid a lot for it. That means he knew it was stolen. Um, I think even at a probable cause level, that's a stretch. Because basically, I can tell you this. I'm not a weapons guy. I don't know what one pays for weapons. If someone wanted to sell me a weapon, and said it's 150. Well, I am, and I think probably well, yeah, 50 are. was 50 was too high. But all right, all right, all right. you you are. But we don't have any evidence that he is. There's no evidence here that he would know that. And so, if you're going to try to argue, oh well, he paid too much. That means he knows it was stolen. Well, you have to show that he would have known that. You have to show that he would have had that knowledge. If that's going to be your argument for knowledge that he knew the weapon was stolen. And they have to put on something that tells you that he knew the weapon was stolen. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to take those arguments out of their mouths. That's exactly what I'm doing here. The argument that recent possession of something that was recently stolen might lead to an inference that he knew it was stolen. The idea that because he paid so much or a particular price for a weapon, that he must have known it was stolen without showing that he's the knowledgeable person about what weapons would cost. And you have to set aside your knowledge on it. You have to do that. Well, I, I certainly can set aside my knowledge, but I'm just saying, I mean, there's other indicia. The that fact it was wasn't stolen. registered. I mean, okay, because it wouldn't have come back stolen if it had been. That's the reason I can say. Well, yeah, okay. Well, I'm not arguing that the weapon wasn't stolen, but I'm arguing that they haven't shown that he knew it was stolen. I'm arguing that they don't haven't shown anything that says he had the knowledge that this is a stolen weapon. Okay, so it wasn't registered. All right. So how long had he had the weapon? We don't know that. There's no evidence to say how long he had it. There's no evidence to say that he didn't just pick up that weapon the day before and maybe he was going to register it if he thought he could. None of that's there. Buying a weapon doesn't, even if you buy it under illicit means, doesn't mean that you know it's stolen. It just means you bought it illicit. It means you bought something you shouldn't have bought. That doesn't mean that it's stolen. Okay. So the bottom line is, Your Honor, they do have to put on some evidence or some evidence from which it could be reasonably and logically inferred of his knowledge of the nature of this weapon, that it was in fact a stolen weapon. None of that is here. You can talk about all you want. Well, he shouldn't have paid as much as it. it was such an ugly weapon. Why would he pay that much? Or it wasn't registered. Those things don't matter if they don't show that he, this person, this individual, had knowledge that this was a stolen weapon. Could have been something somebody found, somebody tossed away. This could have been. But it's weapon. it's knowledge or reason to know. All right. Well, right. And so, did, all right. I, I love that. Wouldn't what that reason? really? Would, okay, wouldn't that really be an issue of fact? No, given all the circumstances. No, no, and no, because they have to put on some evidence from which you can infer that element. They have to put on evidence of all the elements, and the necessary <laughs> element here is that he should have known or had a reason to know it was stolen. None of the things that they talk about will lead to that conclusion. None of the th evidence they put on will lead to the, lead to the conclusion that he, this individual knew or should have known this was a stolen weapon. He might have known that he bought it illicitly. He might have known that he shouldn't have a weapon. But none of that says that he knew that this particular weapon was a stolen weapon. And that's what they have to show. If they're going to say that he should be bound over on receiving and concealing a stolen weapon, that particular knowledge. And it's just not there. All right. So as to the others, the theory and concealed weapon, possession by a felon, I think those are actually issues for the trial. But the one 
is not an issue because they haven't made an issue because they have not put in sufficient evidence for you to logically infer that he had knowledge that this was a stolen weapon. Thank you, Adam. When we were here on April 2nd, 2024, Trooper Chowdhury testified. During his testimony, I admitted the defendant's admissions to Trooper Chowdhury. Trooper Chowdhury testified that the defendant told him that he had purchased the firearm two days prior and that he had purchased the firearm from somebody by the name of Jay that he wouldn't provide any further details about who Jay was or the information about the sale. So when I layered that prior testimony on top of today, testimony, if I had to too much, $125 for a high point, and that the high point was in poor condition, in this painted condition, and that it's returned stolen, I do certainly have at least a probable cause and a question for the jury as to whether or not this defendant knew or had reason to know that this firearm was stolen. I kind of not want to get Jay in trouble with an illicit weapon sale. It's not knowledge that it, it, was, it was stolen. That's just, that's a big, that's a huge. What the huge leap? That some guy named Jay sold an overpriced weapon to somebody? That's a huge leap as to whether or not I know it's stolen? Exactly right. It's illicit sales. Maybe he knows he's not supposed to have a weapon. Doesn't mean he knows it's stolen. Again, he's not trying to bring everybody else down with him. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Brown. Um, as, having heard all the testimony, and we, as to count one, certainly the people who have sustained their burden in court would find, find an overstand charge trial on count one. As to count two, there's been much talk about the receiving and concealing and the defendant's knowledge of that. There is certainly... Um, well, people haven't shown his direct knowledge necessarily. Um, there is certainly evidence by which a fact finder could infer that the defendant had knowledge. One, the purchase of a firearm at an amount by the testimony of Mr. Spencer at an amount more than really twice what he um, paid, what he would have paid for that same weapon, having knowledge of that weapon. Um, the fact that there's an admission that he purchased it from some guy named Jay two days prior, the weapon is not registered, so it comes back stolen. All of those things, I think, can be used to, at least by a fact finder, to infer that the defendant had some knowledge that this was indeed a stolen weapon. Um, so for those reasons, the court would find that the people have indeed sustained their burden as to count two and would bind the defendant over on that charge also. Mr. Brown, with the it, with the addition of the April twenty second to twenty third day, there are ways the uh, presentation information. My client was still in there. Defendant having way of reading and presentation, court will enter is not guilty plea as to both counts. Pre-trial in this matter will be set for. June 4th at 1.30 before Judge Kunke. June 4th, 2024, 1.30.